everyone, it's Kelly here. I don't know if anybody can hear me. This is my first time going live on YouTube. I'm gonna give it a shot and I'm gonna tell you why. It's because we lost power for the past three days. And I didn't have time to make a video for you guys. So I'm just looking to see if I'm actually going live. I do see it. Let's see if I've got you facing. No, I have you facing the wrong way, don't I? have to do it this way it looks like and I can't see anybody's comments <laughs> oh let me see here I'm sorry guys I'm gonna have to try to figure this out let me try it this way I'm trying to clip you up above I'm in my PJs hey Melanie <laughs> I, oh gosh now I've Let's see, I've hit the mute button. Can you guys hear me? Am I still muted? Okay, good. You can hear me. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to hang you guys up here so you can see it. I really want it to go the other way. Anybody know if I can do portrait this way? I'm going to... No, nope, doesn't look like I can. Well, I'm going to go for it anyway this way. I'm going to try to hook you guys back up without hitting the mute button. And I don't want that in there. And I don't want to be upside down. This is how I want it. <laughs> I think I may go... Maybe I should go offline and then go back on. What do you guys think? Good morning, Carmen. Yeah, do you guys want to watch me this way? Is that okay? I'm just kind of playing anyway. I just wanted to get on and chat with you guys while over here you can see. Okay, I'm looking to see what you guys can see. I don't want you to see me in my pajamas and my hair not done. <laughs> because I, I look like a lioness right now. Melanie said this is good. This, this will work. It's really weird because it's actually upside down for me, backwards. So anyway, I thought... I thought that I would show you guys really quickly here. A lot of folks um, don't have white gouache. So I thought I would show you what you could use in place of white gouache if you are working with watercolor. Now white is always one of those challenging things and we're actually talking about white this month in my art exploration group right now. And it's a challenge because I mean, with watercolor, you're supposed to use the white of the paper. That really is your white. So that is, you know, the key thing. And I don't, I don't often paint that way. I tend to, I'm a messy painter and I'm a quick painter, so I don't use um, a lot of the paper, which I should as a traditional watercolorist. But so white gouache is my go-to. I actually put the white on after my paintings a lot of times. I don't often leave a lot of white space. So. Anyway, I'd show you, I thought I'd show you today what you could use in place of it. So I have a watercolor cards. This is so perfect, you guys, if you are brand new to watercolor and it's a really inexpensive way to um, paint when you're first starting out. So these are by Strathmore and you know, the regular cards, you can fold them up there. I think 140 pound watercolor paper. But what I like to do is I take my little scissors and I just cut right down the center of the card. And I have the perfect five by seven that way. So I can play with, um, you know, new things when I'm first starting out or trying new things. So this is the way to go. Instead of, you know, buying that really expensive arches paper or this is the new paper I've been using. I'll show you this one. Uh, it's cotton. 
and it's Stonehenge. <laughs> Watch out for my candle. Burn, burn the place down. Oh no! Stonehenge cold press. It's cotton paper. This stuff is really good and I've been practicing some things on this lately. I love this paper. I think I haven't said it before. So anyway, um, I thought we'd just give it a shot here live and see how I can show you how to use some white other ways. So obviously the number one thing that you can use is masking fluid to keep your paper white. This is great stuff, uh, but it's messy and it ruins a lot of your brushes. So what I like to do often is use my calligraphy pen when I'm using this or I'll use like a toothbrush or something. Do I have my toothbrush here? I do. Wipe it off. So the trick with masking fluid is getting the bottle off. <laughs> the top of it off. <laughs> Let's see. So you can see it. It gets like gummed up in there. The stuff is, and it smells funny, I will say. It's not the best smelling stuff. But this one has a little bit of a tint to it, so you can see where you put it on your paper. So I usually just pour a little bit in the cap. I work kind of quickly with this, and I don't like to use my brushes, or I use very inexpensive brushes <clears throat> when I'm working with it. I'm trying to find my calligraphy pen. Uh, I know it's here somewhere. Okay. I can't find it, so I will use an inexpensive brush here. So usually what I first do is I will put a little bit of soap on there when I first start out, but I don't have any soap handy, and it's a really bad brush, as you can see. So you can just dip it in, and let's just do some rocks. I have a, a watercolor rock class, and I'm going to add another video to that, because I thought this would be a great great thing to add because a lot of people, like I said before, don't have gouache. So you can just squish it down on there. Looks like I have some alcohol ink on this one. You can see it's kind of pink. Let's see how this turns out. It may uh, not actually show up as white. So there's a really quick funky looking rock. Does it look like a rock to you? So you can do this, let it dry. And of course I'm live, so we'll have to wait for that to dry. But I'm gonna do a little toothbrush action here too. I'm just gonna spread. So this is great if you're doing like water splashing up over the rocks or something. You can get some splashes going on. I have a little bit of water in there, so hopefully that will let that dry. Let me just wipe that off. So who's here with me this morning? I've got a couple, couple of you. Erica, hi Erica. Penny's here, or was here. You're still here? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm crooked, you guys. This is all because I lost power for three days and then we, we got it back for like less than 24 hours and we lost it again. So this is my first time live on here and I've got it going portrait, which it's my bad. I'll do it better next time. So I'm going to pour the rest of my masking fluid in there, wipe that out so that I don't get all of that gunk the next time I open it. We'll put that back on there and I'm going to just kind of set this one aside and let that dry a little bit and in the meantime, I'll take my other piece of paper. By the way, the Strathmore has its... Um, two-sided. You don't want to paint on that real soft shiny side. You want to paint on the one that has a little bit of texture. And one of the things I talk about in class is depending on the texture of your paper when you're using um, some of these next techniques that I use, you really need to do like a dry brush technique. And it's better if your paper has a little bit of tooth to it, a little bit of texture. So like the hot press paper doesn't seem to work quite as well because it's more of a smooth paper. So let's see here. I've got my little watercolor Cotman kit. If you are brand new to watercolors, you guys, this is a wonderful starter kit because it only has 12 colors in here and it has Chinese white. And I'm going to show you, um, I don't use Chinese white really at all. <laughs> um, it's chalky, it's uh, very opaque, but it just doesn't do what gouache will do. I will show you the difference. Um, a lot of people will use it 
for just lightening their colors a little bit, but I'm not, as you can see, I, I don't think I really ever use that. So let me just show you, um, if I just put a little bit of blue down here on my paper, I am going to have to let that dry though. So I'll put a little bit of blue down and we'll try, I'll show you what the Chinese white does on there. But I want to show you really quick how to do that dry brush technique. So I'm going to, I'm going to since I'm going to do rocks, we'll stick with the rocks. So I've got a little bit of the ultramarine blue. You guys see my sand dollar in there? It's not a real sand dollar. It's actually made of clay. <laughs> I always felt guilty getting real sand dollars. So I like my clay one. So you guys need to talk to me because I feel like I'm just talking to myself and I'll be really quiet if I just think I'm talking to myself. So who's tried, who's tried a white gouache before? Let me know in the comments here in the live chat and tell me what else you've used. I'd love to hear what else you guys have used. So this is almost dry, not quite. I don't know if you guys can hear the wind. It's still blowing. We had 53 mile an hour gusts yesterday. It was crazy. We lost lots of trees and stuff too. Uh, what is a sand dollar? Oh, the sand dollar penny. It's nothing. It's just for me <laughs> because I like it and I think it's pretty. So I just leave them in there. And it's funny because whatever it's made out of, I, which I don't know what exactly it is, but it doesn't seem to hold color. Like I use that for you know rinsing off my watercolors and it doesn't hold color. Now I've not done that with alcohol inks because alcohol inks, of course, it might be more permanent, but yeah, it's just for me. I think it's pretty. All right, so I have mixed up a little bit of the ultramarine blue and I think that one's the, the brown. I don't know if that's burnt umber or raw sienna, raw umber. I can never remember, I always get them mixed up. Um, and I'm going to just, if I push, push down on my paper and I just skip it a little bit, you can see where I can get some skips, more natural skips. You're welcome, Penny. <laughs> Uh, but this has a lot of water still on it so as I work it a little bit more you can see I can dry some of that off and you see how I can get that nice skip this is great for water when you're doing water too and you want that little sparkle in your water so in place of white gouache you can use obviously the paper which is really the go-to thing so let me just make more of a shape of a rock here this time does it look like a rock these are our main coastal rocks. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna make a little purple in there. A little bit of the crimson to that. I have a little shadow here. Sorry, my window is over here to the side of me. So let's dab a little bit of that. Purple in the bottom here. Uh, what product? Are you using for the rock? Um, for paints you mean? Is that what you're talking about? What kind of paints am I using? I'm using, um, these are Cotman watercolors, the Cotman watercolor kit, if that's what you mean. Is it Elaine? Do I say, did I say that right? So anyway, you can see how I have you know some a, a little bit of a little bit of white here and there you can create just some natural looking texture on your rock with just leaving that white space and then let me see if this is dry this is yeah it's pretty dry so let's show you the Chinese white here and you can see what that's going to do this now this is a very light color so we'll see if we can get it to show up here Really working that. Making a little puddle, let's see. So can you see it? I'll put it close up for you. Maybe. So you see it just pretty much just makes it gray. It does have more of a blue tint to it, but it's really not the best for getting that nice sparkle in your water. Not like your white paper will do. So another option that I like to do 
is use the Posca pen. Uh, order the paper, the glue, sorry. I'm, tr I'm sorry, I'm trying to read your notes. The order, paper, the glue. Sorry, it's easy to talk. I know it is more easier to t it is easier to talk. Um, so I'm still not quite sure what you mean. The paper is um, Strathmore watercolor card paper, actually, and I cut it in half. So if you watch at the beginning, you can see where they come in a little set, and then I just I cut them in half. Oh, I c you can use. You can also use glue, and that's where, if that's what you mean for um, leaving white areas. You can also use white crayons if you want to. I don't have those handy with me, so I'm not going to show you that today. But anyway, back to um, yeah, the paper. The first paper, sorry, was oh um, the cotton paper, the good stuff, <laughs> the Stonehenge paper. Is that what you mean? It's by, by Legion Paper. It's 100% cotton. Um, anyway, uh, so Posca pens, these things are awesome. They come in a lot of different size nibs too. So you can get a different um, you know, width on your rocks. If you're doing some smaller rocks, they have a real fine point. I think this one is the three, yeah, three millimeter. I think it's millimeter. Is that what the M stands for? Um, they can get a little messy. Don't shake them over your painting when you're working with them because sometimes it will drip out. So this is dry, it's almost dry. So you do want to push down and kind of get it going, but you can use that for a little highlight as well. And then maybe even tap your finger on it while it's still wet. Again, you can see it's not quite as bright white as what you get when you're just leaving that paper. Paper is the, really the, the way to go, but this will work. You can get a little bit of white in there with that. Another option is using, if you've uh, used Derwent Ink Tense pencils before, these are watercolor pencils, and they do have a white one. Again, it doesn't show up quite as much, but it can give you some nice texture. So let me just show you here. I don't know if you can see that. It's more of, again, more of a gray, a gray, a light gray type look very very light it's again not um, not quite as bright white not as strong so my two favorites probably would be the Posca pen and the masking fluid so speaking of the masking fluid I think we're dry enough so let's just show you what the masking fluid does how are you guys all doing by the way everybody doing okay hanging out at home are you staying in? Are you guys staying in or are you uh, still venturing out? We had our groceries delivered this week. We used um, Instacart. Have you heard of that? <laughs> that was nice. So we didn't even go out last week at all, which was nice. All right, so uh, I've got that same color and I'm just gonna go right over where I use that masking fluid. Probably used a little bit too much. It's gonna be an awful lot of white space here, but this is a really easy way of doing it. Okay, so we have a nice rock there. Let's put a little bit. I should wait for this to dry, but we're doing live, so I'm not gonna. Let's just do a little bit of water in here in the background. I'm gonna have to let that dry. It's hard doing things live. This is why I do everything videotaped. I have to wait so long, you guys get bored. So let's go back to this one here and I'm gonna show you, <clears throat> just in case you've never used white gouache and you wanna know what am I talking about? <laughs> white gouache is, um, it's more, more opaque and it's kind of the consistency of a little bit like toothpaste this one is permanent white so it's probably a little bit it's brighter white 
And you can mute this as well. I actually have some that's dry on my little plate here, so let me show you that. So this has already been dried, so if I add water to it, it's like watercolor that way. It will reactivate with water. And you can see, should have made more rocks, so I have more space to work on. But you can see how, you can see that white on there. This is fairly transparent too, but you can still see that little bit of gray underneath. Now, if I continue to work that back and forth, you'll actually pick up that gray underneath. And this is where people get that muddied look when they're working with gouache a lot of times. So if you keep moving it back and forth, it's going to turn gray or it's going to turn whatever color you have on the underneath of it. So let's do it with the blue here and I'll show you. So you can see how it's more of a gray. It's not real white because I picked up some of that gray that's under this one. And if I continue to work that, I'll pick up that blue underneath. So then if I dry that off, I'm going to go directly into more of a thicker paint and put a little bit more on there. And you don't want to goop it up like you would uh, using like acrylic paints because you're going to use way too much of it. You don't need to use quite that much. And this stuff is a little bit more expensive. So obviously you don't want to use it like you would acrylics. So I have a lot more on here now, a lot less water, and you can see how I can get nice texture on there. And it's quite white now. So this is probably, this is why I use this, this is so much easier to add white to things with this, especially if it's a little thicker. Not the prettiest rock I know, but we'll keep working on it. So that's the gouache. Anybody have any questions about gouache? Who's used gouache? You guys are still awfully quiet. All right, so back to this. I think it's almost dry. Let me fan it a little bit more. blow my candle out. So I have this little tool that I absolutely love, if I can find it, somewhere here. Well, I love it so much that I put it somewhere and I can't find it. Well, it's anyway, it's a rubber cement eraser kind of thing. <laughs> called a, I, th I can't remember if it's called a pick. I can't believe I, I just had it too. Let's pour my drawer a little bit more. Nope. I had it yesterday, I was using it, but I don't know. I did something with it. I'm just going to use my finger. So. All you need is your finger to wipe that masking fluid off. And I will say with masking fluid, if you are using it for larger paintings, don't leave it on there for too long. And if you're using like a heat tool or if you're using a blow dryer or something like that, sometimes people have had a harder time peeling it off. And look, so I just, this paper is not as good of paper. You can see here where I just actually tore the paper with the masking fluid. That's good to have happen live so you can see it. So that's a bad thing. <laughs> Again, another reason why that little tool is really good too. It's a little bit easier on it. So this is where I actually used my toothbrush. And I should have done a darker color so you guys could have seen it better, but I didn't. So there you go. That is the masking fluid. Uh, Rachel says that she's never used gouache. Oh, you're a newbie for watercolor painting. Oh, 
I love watercolor, you guys. As a matter of fact, with you know all of this stuff going on right now, I've been exclusively using just the watercolor lately. I haven't. Um, I use my alcohol actually for making myself some homemade hand sanitizer. <laughs> Yeah, watercolor is awesome. It's, it's so much fun. Everybody always says watercolor is very challenging, and I actually started with watercolor when I started painting, so uh, for me, I, I find actually acrylic was challenging. I think it's all with what you start with, what you begin with, because acrylics, um, they dried a lot faster than oils, and watercolor obviously dries a lot faster than either of them. And I'm, I'm a quick painter, so I actually enjoy how fast watercolor dries. So anyway, I could continue to work on that, but I thought I'd just jump on live because I didn't have time today to do a Tuesday video for you guys, and I still am late, but like I said, we got our power back on. Uh, we get, we did lose it again last night, so um, I thought the live would be kind of fun and to get to talk to you guys. Uh, so thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll have a Tuesday video for you guys next week. Um, and let me know if you guys like the lives. I, I mean, this is really easy. I don't have to do any kind of edits. <laughs> so if you like having the lives every once in a while, uh, let me know. And let me know if there's something that you are interested in or are curious about um, and you want to see. This, these are obviously are not finished paintings. Uh, this one here I just worked on. I'll show you this. This was uh, just one I was playing with yesterday. I was painting my little sand dollar. So I thought I might do a class on this, and then I did the rocks down here on the bottom. I was working on showing um, what I just showed you in class. I'm going to be adding a little video for that. So thanks, Penny. I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right, guys. I will uh, see you all next week. Bye-bye. Maybe if I could figure out now how to hang this thing up. That's not.